Well, he did have a lot of freedom. He said, use your freedom to love people. Just love. Love by serving. And serving is not always fun. Because that means, you know, you're always serving others. That means you are last. You're not the one that goes to the front of the line. You're not the one that gets to sit back and relax. But you're the one that's being served. You're serving others. And that's why he said, serve others through love. Give your life to them. When a couple makes a commitment to be married to one another, that's what they're saying. I'm going to serve you. I'm going to sacrifice my life for you. I'm going to spend my life giving to you. <clears throat> but no thought of getting back. See, we don't serve to get something back. We serve because of whose we are. Because of what Christ has done for us. We want to put others first. One of the two commands that God has given us. Love God with all of our heart and then love others as ourselves. And you want to be treated well, don't you? You like it when people treat you well. I remember... Uh, uh, several years ago, uh, we had a man in our church, and he was a grocery distributor. He anyway, had different things, and, and so he worked with the uh, Marshall's Food Store. And so they gave him uh, tickets to sit uh, at the Indy 500 in the executive suite all through all you know all through the month of May. They have practice uh, sessions and speed tests and all that. And so he gave tickets to us, me and my son. And so we got to go sit in the executive booth overlooking uh, Pit Row. We even got tickets to go down into the uh, garage area. And even I got to go out while the, the cars were coming off the track. I actually go over the wall and right there and take my camera right in Emerson Fittipaldi's face and take a picture of him. And you know what? They treated us like kings. We were sitting up there. They brought us food. We finish it, they bring us something, and they come up, what else do you want? Would you like something to drink? Would you like something? And it was kind of nice. <laughs> Being served. Then imagine us doing that for someone. Doing that for others. Serving others. That's what He's called us to do. Let me give you a new command. Love one another in the same way I loved you. You love one another. This is how everyone will recognize that you are my disciples. When they see the love you have for each other. I think our greatest witnessing tool is just to fall in love with each other. And I'm looking out. Y'all might not be easy to love. I know I'm not. But God says, let's fall in love with each other. Let's serve each other. Let's do everything we can for one another. Even though there's some attributes about some of us that may not be so pleasant. My uh, daughter, she works at a nursing home. She, talk, she comes home and she talks about some of the when some of the patients are, are in, I want to say inmates, they're not inmates. But you know, you just think about those people there. And she talks about how some of them act and some of the things they do. And she tells about how she just is, always tries to have a pleasant voice and always act, treat them nicely. And that's what we're to do. I think it would get people's attention. Tomorrow, when you go to work, you start showing them love. You don't go in there with a grumpy attitude, start murmuring under your breath. But you go in there with a smile on your face. You see somebody that needs something, you go, you help them. They'll think you're crazy. You think, oh, you must be one to raise. No, you just want to show love. 
to love by serving one another. I think I had to push that a little bit. Love. Love. By sharing with others. Love by sharing. It talks about this in Acts chapter 2. How that they shared what they had with one another. When they saw a need, they met it. That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to show our love for one another. By meeting one another's needs. As a church, we have needs. And he says, share with them. We're to show our love by sharing. Show our love for the Lord by meeting one another's needs. In Hebrews chapter 13, so stay on good terms with each other, held together by love. Be ready with a meal or a bed when it's needed. You know what that takes in order for us to love people by sharing with them? That means we have to be involved with each other. In order to share with someone, you have to know they have a need. And the only way you're going to find out they have a need is by getting involved. And to get involved, that means you have to get out of your comfort zone. You have to get out of that place where you know, you, you may not feel quite so comfortable doing. Oh, you know, if I, if I do this, you know, I'll just embarrass them. I'll just make them feel awkward. I'll, you know, we always have an excuse of why we don't help someone. I've done it. I've made those excuses. But God said we're to live a life of love. The way that we do that is by sharing with one another. Uh, recently, we had a need for an extra car and a family in this church shared their vehicle with us. You can imagine that, sharing your automobile with someone else to drive and not knowing how I drive. I mean, that's amazing. But you know what? That's what it means to love. What mine is yours. What yours is mine. We, it's because we're all a part of God's family. Share with others. In Galatians chapter 6. It says, Share every good thing you have with anyone who teaches you what God has said. You cannot fool God, so don't make a fool of yourself. You will harvest what you plant. If you follow your selfish desires, you will reap, or you will harvest destruction. But if you follow the Spirit, you will harvest eternal life. Don't, look at this, don't get tired of helping others. Don't get tired of it. And one thing you, I, I noticed, when you help someone out, you really feel good inside. Because you've been able to do something for someone else. There have been times when you might have been able to help someone, and so they help you, but then there's a, be a time to come where you'll be able to help others. And so don't get tired of it. You will re be rewarded when the time is right if you don't give up. Live a life of love. That's what God is saying to us. There in Ephesians 5, in verse 1 it says, Be imitators of God. Be imitators of Him. That means, look at Him. Look at Jesus. And see how He lived His life. He lived His life for others. Showing love. Sacrificially, He died for others. He spent His life sharing with others. Spent His life serving others. That's how we're to live. And remember, that love is a verb. Something that we do. Not to get our salvation. We don't serve to get salvation. We don't share to get salvation. We receive that when we realize that we're a sinner and we need Jesus. But we share because of God's love for us. 
what He has put in us to spend our life loving others. Father, we just come before You. We thank